Hello there folks, and welcome back to some more Warhammer 40k lore. Today, as I said in the previous House Vironi episode, we shall return to this stoic Imperial Nighthouse and learn a few more things about their characters, organization, and a few other bits and bobs. So, without further ado, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and let us proceed, shall we? The Venerable Grandmaster Yak was the ruler of House Vironi during its reunification with the Imperium and the last decades of the Great Crusade. He was a figure of controversy among the House, having gained a lot of respect for his clairvoyant leadership and his steadfastness during House Vironi's long vigil, even staying on their homeworld of Demetas to secure the House's future rather than go out seeking glory among the stars. Obviously disgusted by the avarice of the Mechanicum envoys, he proved to be a consummate politician, postponing the vital question of the House's alignment until its reputation had considerably grown, therefore ensuring their independence. Unfortunately, his obstinacy on the path he had chosen would leave the House vulnerable at the dawn of the Horus Heresy, the House still not having properly bonded with a Forge world and thus failing to ensure its resupply when the Warmaster's shadow fell upon the Cyclops cluster. Grandmaster Yak would die honorably in what would be called the Battle of First Landing, against the treacherous Mechanicus forces of Cyclofraith, which had hoped to ambush the assembled Vironi fighters and wipe them out. Grandmaster Gios was the eldest son of the Grandmaster Yak. He was a hero of the Great Crusade and the leader of House Vironi during the Horus Heresy. He was also counted among the most lauded rulers of the House of all time. Through his determination and valiant actions were the Vironi warned of the impending attack of Cyclofraith on Demetas III, which led to the aforementioned Battle of First Landing. Following in his father's footsteps, the mortally wounded Gios would eventually have to be sealed in his artificer rod Kestoris Knight Magira, which would keep him alive for many years afterwards. Determined to avenge his father's demise and exact vengeance on the treacherous Mechanicum of Cyclofraith, Gios would be both a competent leader and a brave warrior through the dark years of the Horus Heresy. Chancellor Jastan the Thrice Slain was a scion in command of the venerable Kestoris Knight Paladin Artemisia. Among the most experienced knights of the house, he would be grievously wounded not once, not twice, but three times in the name of the house and the emperor. Each time the warrior would live on to take to the battlefield once more, until he finally fell on Manakea in defense of Hive Ulan. During his time, his wisdom and experience made him one of the most important members of Grandmaster Yak's court, and his advice was rarely ignored. Elizabeth Vore is another exceptional figure among the Knights of House Vironi. Among other things, she would be among the first women of Vironi to command a knight in battle. Her reputation was, however, not entirely built on her gender. She was one of the few knights known to have slain one of the dreaded god creatures of Demetas III in the 30th millennium, slaying the monster on the lands of her Serastus knight lancer Absinthos after resisting its terrible psionic powers. Her formidable strength of will will continue to serve her well in the years of battle in the Great Crusade. Unfortunately, her promising career would end tragically in a last charge against the Reaver battle titan Rax Valian of the traitor element of the Legio Tempestus, which she would destroy on Manakea. Her ultimate fate is unknown, but it is widely believed that her mortal remnants and the carcass of her knight armor are still entombed in the rubble of the shattered hive city of Ilium. Caradoc was a House Vironi knight which piloted Serastus knight castigator Melie in the Horus Heresy. He was among the knights of House Vironi who took part in the battle for Terra itself. Disdainful and domineering of his subordinates, such as Acastia, during the battle of the Mercury Exultant Kill Zone, he refused to withdraw despite a failing loyalist situation. However, in the final stages of that battle, before the Legio Mortis Titans, Caradoc panicked and succumbed to a fit of insanity. Ulus Varim Skor was a warrior piloting the Kestoris Knight Crusader Parisina, which participated in at least three major campaigns of the early Horus Heresy, taking part in the Second Battle of Paramar. During that war, Parisina was heavily damaged, but the warrior's broken body was later recovered from the burning wreckage 
but his ultimate fate is unknown. Bold and courageous, Acastia was a bondsman of the House Vironi and pilot of the Knight Armiger Illatus during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Her role was that of a scout among a cohort of mighty titans, and her fearlessness and endeavor served her well in that regard. She was a warrior born, a free spirit, and eager to test her mettle against the war machines of the traitor legios. Enduring constant abuse by her commanding lord Caradoc, she nonetheless dutifully took part in the battle of the Mercury Exultant Kill Zone at the Siege of Terra, battling along the hunters of the Legio Solaria under Abhani Lus Mohana. She did survive that engagement, but her ultimate fate is unknown. At the time of the coming of the traitor forces in the Coronid Deeps, the House Vironi was grievously under strength. Its numbers were just below 100 operational knights, predominantly of these Serastus and Questoris patterns. This would place House Vironi in the lower segment of Secundus grade knight households. As a consequence of the former Grandmaster's reluctance to forge bonds with the Mechanicum after the coming of the Great Crusade, not many of the ancient armors had been replaced, and almost all of them were relics of the Dark Age of Technology, repaired and rebuilt many times over. As such, the machine spirits residing within each was possessed of a singular anima, at once bellicose and brooding, and this demeanor was inevitably transmitted to the Scion pilots via their integration with the Throne's Mechanicum. Only later, in the aftermath of the vicious attack by the Cyclophrane Mechanicum and its consequent pact with the Forge World of Mazoa, did House Vironi finally receive rearmament. In particular, Grandmaster Gios, who was mortally wounded in his mission to bring news of the Warmaster's betrayal, was gifted by the Magi of Mazoa with a precious Kestoris Knight Magira, known as Deifagia, in reference to the Knight House's extermination of the autogophonic godfangs of Demeter's Free. The artificer wrought systems of this armor not only saved his life, but rendered him all but immortal, in a manner not unlike a hero of the Adeptus Astartes interred within a dreadnought. At the time of the Warmaster's march on the Corona Deeps, the bulk of the House's scions were concentrated once again on Demeter's Free, with only a few others serving in far distant expeditionary fleets. This included those House Vironi Knights which are known to be fighting at the Siege of Sebandapur, alongside a chapter of the Blood Angels on Ferron Free. As war gripped the Corona Deeps, the Vironi would not shirk in their duty, regardless of how exposed the Demeter system was. Deploying units to bolster Imperial forces on Lascal, Manakea, and Port Ma, while at least one battle group was known to have been trapped behind the closing blockade of Mezoa before the Reaper's shadow fell across the Cyclops cluster. Of the remaining scions of the Vironi, probably not more than 50 in number, they all stood to defend their world. For the entirety of the Horus Heresy and the years of war that followed, the survival of the house was far from guaranteed and the losses it suffered may still condemn the household to a slow death. The emblem of the Vironi is a crowned white skull on a field of emerald green, borne upon two white lightning bolts. When fielded as a blazon, the heraldry includes the avian wings of an Imperium-aligned knight house. Maybe in contrary to the other Imperial knight houses of the Segmentum Obscurus Extremis, such as House Orlac or House Maccabius, the Vironi favor a colorful and complex heraldry incorporating countless honor badges. Some of these honor badges are more common, while others are the privilege of just a few. They can take on both the aspects of pictographic emblems, as well as more abstract forms like bands or secondary colors or other motifs to denote rank, accomplishment, or vows taken prior to battle. Most notoriously, the Vironi revered their century-old knight armors over the identity of the pilot, which explains why the Vironi do not favor runes or the names of the pilots adorning the knight's armor. As such, the deeds of the pilot are usually borne on honorary banners or the shoulder-borne tilting shield, which can be easily replaced. They can vary greatly from one knight to another. As an esteemed badge of long services, the armor itself may harbor a campaign badge or the revered emblem of the Imperialis on its armored cowl. Maybe the most common is the fortified tower icon, usually rendered in white. This proclaims that the knight has partaken in the defense of House Vironi's ancestral domain, Fellweather Key. 
Ranks like the Chancellor were denoted by the checkered red and white livery borne upon the shoulder armor as it is still used among numerous knight houses. This was the case for Chancellor Jaston, who also bore three diagonal red bands to commemorate the three grievous wounds he was dealt, as well as the three swords he adopted as the Thrice Slain. As it was the by tradition, the color scheme on honor banners are always inverted from its depiction on the shoulder-mounted shield, creating a colorful mix of red, white and green which constitutes the typical appearance of a House Vironi knight. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Knights of House Vironi for today. A bit ironic that even as a minor house I still ended up making two videos on them. Whereas way back when, when I covered the other major night houses, I usually did them in just one video. Maybe those warrant a revisit too. I do know I will be covering some more minor night houses as part of this small revival. Anyway, what about you? Are you fans of House Vironi now after two videos on them? What did you like or dislike most about them? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on them or opinions in the comments below. If you found the episode at least a bit informative, do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects.